Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Magi Chapter 209 and 210 review. That is 209 and 210 uh, of Magi. Now, if you guys are followers or if you guys watch my episode reviews, I haven't done the last one because I got a copyright strike. Oh my god, Sony Music, yay! Yay! I got a copyright strike on my latest Magi chat um, um, on my latest Magi episode review that I did, and it was bullshit. So I'm gonna wait until that copyright strike goes away, and then I'll do the next two together, like I'm doing for these two chapters of Magi. So I'm I'm just notifying you guys who are viewers of my episode reviews of Magi. Now that being said. These two chapters of Magi, all of 209 and the beginning half of 210 were heavy. Were very heavy because Alibaba is in quite the predicament. Now, I didn't remember all the stuff, so I have some pages saved just to, you know, inform you guys. Because, you know, sometimes I do that. Because when it comes to, like, dual reviews of chapters or triple reviews of chapters or quadruple you get my point, a lot of material, and sometimes I can't remember it all. But here's the thing. Very simply put, from my recollection, so I'm gonna try and just go, you know, off the cuff, make it as short as possible because I do need to go to the gym and work out. So what I'm gonna do is basically this. I'm gonna go as vague as possible, and at the same time, try and go as deep as possible, and we're gonna see how it works out. Basically, from my recollection, when it came to 209, one of the main key, one of the main key key things that we learned was that when it comes to Komei and, and uh, Koen, they believe that it is impossible for the people of the world to get along. It is impossible for this notion of peace to exist from a worldwide standpoint. Because there are always going to be those who have different ideologies, different beliefs. And these beliefs and ideologies will, will always butt heads. And it's not just country-based, but also it can be tribal-based and family-based too. He even, Kome calls Mogamets, the leader, the former leader of Magnostat, naive. In the sense that he believed that it was simply magicians versus normal humans, the go, the goai, whatever you want to call them. But in actuality, it's probably like the like at one point in the future, maybe magicians that have different that have different ideological beliefs and they go against each other. And so on and so forth. So it's a lot deeper than it is first perceived. And what the goal here of Cohen and Koha I'm sorry of Komei and Koen is to unite all the religions, all the ideologies, all the beliefs in the world, have one worldly nation, and, and this is key, erase the history and the memories of the beliefs and ideologies that existed. So to make the world seem as if like it only had one religion, one country, one king. That's some crazy shit. It really is. It really is. To... <sighs> because see, here's Alibaba's fear, and Alibaba's fear is actually reasonable. It's not naive as... It's not... because. Komei calls it naive, but it's not actually like naive. It really isn't. What it is, is his fears are this at some point will lead to seeds of hatred that will one day explode. And that is true. Because the seeds of hatred will... Because if people are being forced to believe a certain thing that they don't resoundingly believe, even though their children may grow up believing it, they themselves don't believe it, you think that people are going to be A-OK -okay by sitting on their asses? No. Now, if the system is well in place, then maybe you have more people who would rather, for example, um, 
Alibaba's friend, the guy who was a part of uh, Kashim's group, I forgot his name, the one who's married with the other girl. Uh, even he himself felt that this is not this, this is not all bad. This is not his country. This is not the way he wanted things to turn out. But he himself didn't want to put his family in danger because she had another child. I think I, I think her name was Zainab, something like that. So the thing about that is that he didn't want to do anything of that nature. He didn't want to start another rebellion, start a coup because he had other lives to worry about aside from his own life. Now, other people in other parts of the globe may not be as soft as he was. They may just say, screw it, no, we're gonna start a whole new rebellion. Because like the Koga Empire, like the empires before them, or after them, like, and even when it came to Almatorra and what happened there, you can't really change people's perspectives on a particular thing like that. But you can change the minds of the children. And I think that's where Kome and Koha and uh, Ko and Koen, I think that that's what they're going for. To change the minds of the future, of the world, of this world. So, so they believe, they genuinely believe that the world is one, one country, one religion, one ideology, and one king. So I understand both viewpoints, and I understand that at some point this will lead to the stems of hatred. I also understand that Alibaba believes that Komei should express his feelings to his people. There is something that Komei is hiding. I have that feeling that something happened to Komei. I don't know what happened exactly, but something happened to Komei where he strongly believes this, and his experiences reinforce that notion that he believe that that he or him and his bro should just remove and erase all ideologies aside from one, remove and erase all countries aside from one, and you know, change the minds of the children because they're the ones who are most susceptible to, um, you know, the change of the world. Now, like how we saw earlier how in Bobad, there are certain people, someone's calling me shit, there are certain people in Bobad who you know, they saw what was going on with the slaves, but they didn't do anything because they were afraid about, you know, the whole tax point situation. The tax points, whatever they're called. And pretty much they let the slaves be beaten, or like the slave was on the ground, who was run over, they let, they let him get hurt. And the kids, they were seeing how their parents didn't react to that. They were seeing how their parents let the kid, uh, like, they, they uh, let the slave on the ground, and that one slave kid, he was gonna die. And when they're when the kids see their parents do that, then they themselves in the future won't do that. So, because you know it obviously rubs off. Now, the thing about it is that again, I do see both viewpoints. And at the end of the chapter of two oh nine, in comes Cohen, and after the talk, basically what it was was that he he says, "Yo, leave Shindoria, leave Sinbad." Become my right hand man, and I will return Bob at you. And then this is where Chapter 2010 goes into. Where Chapter 2010 basically is so you have to marry. So there's three rules. Because Alibaba doesn't want to do this. And, you know, he threatens him. Cohen threatens him and says, Well, you're in the enemy base. And we see Cohen, we see Koha, we see Cohen, we see Kome, we see his household vessels. They start to power up, you know, they start to glow. Like, mm power up and he has to follow three conditions the first condition is that he has to cut all ties with Shindori and Sinbad the second condition is that he must rule Balbad under like he must rule Balbad to where in which it is acceptable for the new regime that Cohen and Cole may have in mind and I'm pretty sure Koha too and the third condition is that he must marry someone who is affiliated with who is affiliated with the House of Red. And the only person available is Kyogo. Now, I've said it before where since, you know, Morjana seems to have no real uh, love interest in Alibaba at this point, I mean, because it's been strongly hinted that she would, but now we find out that it's more of admiration and respect as opposed to actual love. Where in which you could say that maybe Kyogo does kind of love Alibaba, which is a stretch. I'm not too sure about that exactly. But it's just that I've said it before where it's possible. And I kind of did hint about the whole thing 
about how we have some of it like that what orba household of fire and he has water as his base so that could be a foreshadowing maybe of kyogoku and ali Ali getting together them having you know them being in a relationship which at this point in time seems like the best option because Cohen he ain't having any of this shit. He's like, yo, bro, shut the fuck up. Let's go, man. Let's take over this shit. Fuck Sinbad. Fuck Sindoria. You with us now. You, yo, man, you with my posse. You with my boys, man. Like my boys. So it's, it's a tough call, man, because this guy is quite intimidating. Uh, though he laughed when he found out that Alibaba has not touched a woman yet because we have Kome saying you can have several concubines and then he's like mm. so because because he's because apparently the way Alibaba is acting he acts like a virgin or he acts like a man who's never touched a woman before and then he starts to look down and blush and then it's like Cohen <laughs> and Kome they're just staring and Cohen starts to just straight up laugh He's like, uh huh. <laughs> I scolded you. And Alba was like, yo, fuck you, man. He, straight, he releases his uh, sword. Oh, I was, I was, I was going to say Zanpak Toe. Like, Whoa. Different damn series. Uh, that's what happens when you read too much, uh, when you read too, too many series. You got other stuff in your mind. <sighs> he starts to, you know, release Amon. But no, it was a gag scene. It was funny. But basically, Aladdin has time to think. Alba, he has time to think. And the plan here is that once Alibaba leaves Sinbad, Aladdin will also leave, will also leave Sinbad. And like, at some point, Aladdin, Alibaba, they need to make their own country. They really do. Because that's where I think problems lie. I think problems lie because, well, no. Baobad is their country, and it's been taken over. They need to retake Baobad. They need to fortify Baobad to the point where it will be a country standalone where it doesn't need influenced by Shindoria and the Co Empire, it's just by itself. Bobat. And they have to make it so they have like a good army, good followers, that kind of stuff. Almost where like Sinbad has it. Because someone told me that they can see like several time skips for the story. And I can too. Because they need to grow to the point where they because because I'm trying to figure out how, how Alibaba can actually go about the process of unifying the world. And it's a very hard bit to swallow. It really is. But what I can say, what I can say, is that I don't mind the fact that Kyogoku would probably marry, will probably marry Alibaba. In fact, to me, it's the best option at this point in time. And we see Mu coming in. Because the end of uh, 210, basically what it is, is we have Komei talking to Koha, and they talk about how they could use Alibaba to control Bobat, to, you know, make Bobat, to basically retain order in Bobat the way they want order to be retained in the fashion of the Co Empire and slaves. Because slaves, apparently, in the Co Empire, after five years of service, they can be set free, and of course, there's no punishment against the slaves, so their system isn't like bad. It's just a system. It's just a system that people don't want to follow. Obviously, now the thing here is that they also talk about how there is some friction or there's some kind of issue going on between the Rem Empire and the Seven Sea Alliance, and we see Mu come in at the end, and he wants to talk to Morgiana. So what this exactly details, I'm not too sure. What Mu is gonna do with Morgiana, I don't know. Maybe I was thinking that maybe Morgiana has some significant importance because he says, I wanna talk to you as a finalist. So maybe it's like maybe Morgiana is like some kind of royalty once the finalist, I don't know. You would figure that you and I would tell her that because they spent some time together. I don't know. But it is I don't know, because if Mu does something with Morgiana, then that would take her away from Sinbad. Uh, Aladdin may feel impelled to leave Sinbad too because of Alibaba's case, if Alibaba does agree, because he said that it would be a lot harder, or actually, no, he, he said that it would be a lot easier if Kyogoku was like a bitch, like a vicious bitch, but she's not. She's a very nice woman, she's a very nice girl, sweet girl. So what happens now, I'm not too sure, man. Because the fact that Alibaba said, I can't do it, no, wait, give me some time to think. The fact that he said that, I was like, 
Oh, this is deep. This is going so many directions. This is going so many directions before the summit even actually goes off. He, the man was just there to guide him to the summit. That was it. He was there, Alibaba was there to just simply take Cohen and Komei and whoever else was there to the summit area so they can listen to the story when the time was due. But now, it's... Uh, Cohen is manipulative, he's cruel, he is a cruel dude, he's a cruel bastard. Because this is his country, and he wants to, you know, help his country men, but, he, but Cohen won't, won't let him do it. He won't let him do it, and the only option I'm seeing is war, is bloodshed. And that would, of course, lead to something that Alibaba doesn't want to occur, because his people have already suffered enough of war, and poverty, and bloodshed. But in this system, despite the fact that there is minimal freedom, there is no bloodshed. Because there's always someone underneath them who will pay the ultimate price, the slaves. But in the overall system, if the way things pan out to what Komei said, there will be no more slaves because there will be no more wars, no more prisoners of war because there will only be one country, one ideology, one king. Man, it's tough, dude. Like, it's first of all, they, these two titles have been great. So they've been mainly exposition, but they've been phenomenal, great chefs. That's for sure. Both of them. It's just really tough. Alibaba's in a very, very, very tough position. And from a story standpoint, it's really good. It really is good because you don't see you you don't see a lot of main characters be put in these kind of positions. Where they have to question their beliefs, they have to question their goals, their ideologies, their current standing. Because what they do next will affect all those around them. Those who they care about, and of course, the future of the world, given the fact that they are the main characters. So...